Good morning. morning. Welcome to Emmanuel Lutheran Church on this 18th day of October 2020, the Feast of St. Luke Day. Uh, We welcome all those who are are with us online and those in the sanctuary both. Uh, This beautiful fall day reminds us as the leaves are falling down, turning color, that the creation goes on no matter what turmoil our country is in or our world is in God's creation is goes on and we can depend on the Lord to be solid in all situations I have one announcement uh, Camp Frederick in Rogers Ohio is having a fall festival day today from 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. all are welcome are there any announcements uh, from anyone else Pastor, uh, we will now prepare our hearts and minds for worship. This is the day which the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. As we come together today celebrating the Feast of St. Luke Evangelist, I do have a couple of announcements that I I want to make. Um, Back there at the Good Shepherd window on that uh, stand where the German Bible is, uh, you will find the uh, book for the, the sign in the names of persons you want remembered in our service two weeks from today, which will be All Saints Day. Uh, Mention the names of uh, deceased loved ones as as you wish. There is a pencil there. Uh, We are suggesting that uh, you would sanitize your hands before leaving uh, from the church to, or before you go over there to sign that, <coughs> it's suggested <coughs> that you would once again sanitize your hands. Uh, you will note in today's service, uh, we don't have the confession and forgiveness at the beginning. It will be incorporated in with the prayers and intercessions for healing that occurs later in the service. We are also suggesting today uh, that all who are able will kneel for the prayers and intercessions. When we get to that point in the service, it's printed in your bulletin. But if you're not comfortable kneeling, you may uh, just be seated in your pew. So, with that said, let us begin our worship with the invitation and prayer for purity. All who are able, please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ.
Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who want to hear their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of our Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit. In the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us. Almighty God, you inspired your servant Luke to reveal in his gospel the love and healing power of your Son. Give your church the same love and power to heal and to proclaim your salvation among the nations to the glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our great physician and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first lesson from this morning is found in the book of the prophet Isaiah, the 35th chapter, beginning with the 5th verse. The prophet Isaiah wrote a long book, in it he warned of the uh, consequences of the people of Israel not following the Lord and listening to the Lord. But, as in here that we are going to read, if they come back to the Lord and return to the Lord and repent, there are rewards waiting for them. I begin today's lesson. Strengthen the weak hands and make firm the feeble knees. Say to those who are fearful at heart, be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance, with the recompense of God. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then shall the lame man leap like a heart, and the tongue of the dumb sing for joy. For water shall break forth in the wilderness, and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool, the thirsty and the thirsty ground springs of water. The haunt of the jackal shall become a swamp, the grass shall become reeds and rushes. And a highway shall be there, and it shall be called the holy way. The unclean shall not pass over it and fools shall not err therein. The word of the Lord. Thanks be God. Let us now read to, uh, responsively. Psalm number 124 is found in your bulletin. It's an ascension psalm written by David. If the Lord had not been on your side, let Israel now say, If the Lord had not been on our side, Then would they have swallowed us up alive in their fierce anger toward us. Then would the waters have overwhelmed us and the torrent gone over us. Then would the racing waters have gone right over us. Blessed be the Lord. He has not given us over to be afraid for their feet. 
we have escaped like a bird from the snare of the fowler. The snare is broken, and we have escaped. Our God is the King, the Lord, the Maker of heaven and earth. Psalm 119. Our second lesson is found in Paul's second letter to Timothy. As he has given instructions to his protege Timothy up to this point, he ends with, with these words of encouragement and of the rewards that Paul believes is in store for him. As for you, always be steady, enduring suffering. Do the work of an evangelist. Fulfill your ministry. For I am already on the point of being sacrificed. The time of my departure has come. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day. And not only to me, but also to all who have loved his appearance. Do your best to come to me soon. For Demas, in love with the, this present world, has deserted me and gone to Thessalonica. Crescent Crescen has gone to Galatia. Titus to Dalmatia. Luke alone is with me. The Lord, word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Lord, to whom shall we go? You have, have the words word of eternal life. Eternal life. Oh, Hallelujah. Yeah. The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. After this, the Lord appointed 70 others and sent them on ahead of him in pairs to every town and place where he himself intended to go. He said to them, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Go on your way. See, I am sending you out like lambs into the midst of wolves. Carry no purse, no bag, no sandals, and greet no one on the road. Whatever house you enter, first say, Peace to this house. And if a child of peace is there, your peace will rest on that person. But if not, it will return to you. Remain in the same house, eating and drinking whatever they provide, for the laborer deserves to be paid. Do not move about from house to house. Whenever you enter a town and its people welcome you, eat what is set before you. Cure the sick who are there and say to them, The kingdom of God has come near to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise you, O Christ. Christ. Grace, mercy, and peace be multiplied to all of you this day from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. From today's Gospel, the Lord appointed 70 others and sent them on ahead of him in pairs to every town and place where he himself intended to go. Hear the sick who are there, and say to them, The kingdom of God 
has come near to you. And from the Apostle Paul's words to Timothy, Luke alone is with me. In Christ our blessed Lord and Savior, my dear sisters and brothers, we have what I would call the good fortune that St. Luke's Day falls on a Sunday this year. When we celebrate the feasts of the saints, we do, we do it above all to honor Christ, who is at work in the lives of his saints, bearing in mind that in the New Testament sense of the word, all of us are saints sanctified in Christ. In two weeks, we celebrate the Feast of All Saints when we call to mind especially those saints who have gone on before us and have crossed the line of the race of the Christian life before us. So there are those special saints whose life and work has made a permanent impress on the life of the church as a whole. We don't know a lot about St. Luke, but what we do know is enough to give him an everlasting place in the memory of the church universal. He was evidently a Gentile Christian of Greek descent, most likely a native of the city of Antioch in Syria. He accompanied St. Paul on some of his later missionary journeys, and he was with Paul when Paul was a prisoner in Rome. He was a physician by trade. In Colossians 4.14, Paul refers to him as the beloved physician. And for this reason, we associate him with the healing ministry. In our second reading, as Paul is in prison awaiting execution, he writes to Timothy, only Luke is with me. And we must not fail to mention that we are indebted to Luke for two of the books of the New Testament, the Gospel of Luke and the Acts of the Apostles. We get a picture of Luke as one who faithfully and quietly goes about his work, not seeking praise or recognition, a faithful friend and companion of the Apostle Paul. His chief delight is to serve Christ by attending to Paul's needs. So it means standing in Paul's shadow. For it is here that Christ chooses to do his work through Luke as he chose to work through Paul on the center stage of the church's history. It is true that, that Luke made a major contribution in the writing of the Gospel and the Book of Acts, yet he wrote them almost anonymously, for nowhere does he state by name that he is the author, but we have this by a very strong tradition. And he acknowledges in the opening words of his gospel 
that he used many other sources and no doubt spoke to many who had been eyewitnesses of our Savior's ministry. It is only Luke's gospel that tells us about those 70 anonymous disciples. Some ancient manuscripts give the number as 72, which is reflected in some of our versions of the Bible. These are additional disciples that Jesus sent out as an, an advanced team to some areas of Galilee that he himself intended to cover. None of the names of these 70 disciples are given, though tradition has assigned names to some of them. But as the 12 apostles represent the outreach to Israel with its 12 tribes. So these 70 anonymous ones represent the outreach to the nations of the Gentile world. For the number 70 in Jewish tradition represented all the other nations according to the table of nations that you can read in the 10th chapter of the book of Genesis. And when that Hebrew Bible was translated into Greek, it comes out to 72 nations. So that's why you have that disparity in the text as to 70 or 72 disciples sent out. And many of the towns and villages of Galilee had a mixed population of Jews and Gentiles, so this pointed ahead to the future Gentile mission of the church. And Luke's gospel emphasizes that the gospel is intended for all people. The important lesson for us here is that even if no one remembers our name, what is finally important is that we have been true to the call that God has extended to us when he made us his own. That is to carry the message in word and deed, to bring a word of peace, to people at war with themselves and their neighbors. It's to heal the sick, as did Luke, the beloved physician, and as did those 70 disciples. The church is to be a healing community. And I'm afraid that uh, when we hear of the ministry of healing, the picture we get in our minds may be of a noisy, flamboyant evangelist supposedly healing people with one hand while he takes their money with the other hand. And sad to say, such frauds do exist. But that is not what we have in mind here. But I have known servants of God who quietly carry on a ministry of healing by prayer and do get results. We do believe in the power of prayer. Several times now, in bulletins and newsletters, we've been publishing a wonderful prayer related to this time of the coronavirus. This prayer is a gift from brothers and sisters in the Ukrainian Orthodox Church. Not that they sent it to us directly, Dean found it online. But it is such a beautiful prayer. No one can say that we are not ecumenical. We also believe that the church's ministry of healing 
goes hand in hand with the ministry of healing through medicine, a ministry that St. Luke himself exercised as a physician, especially during this time of COVID-19. We pray that some effective cure or vaccine may be found for this plague that lies over our land. And as we experience the ups and downs from, from day to day and week to week, not knowing quite what to expect, even as we do our best to take all possible precautions, this can put us in a tailspin. But may we recall the words of Paul's encouragement to Timothy in first, uh, 2 Timothy 1, verse 7. He writes, and I'd like to quote this from the King James Bible, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. The sound mind is important. It doesn't mean throwing caution to the wind. My sisters and brothers, may we, like Luke, be true to God's call in our lives, proclaiming the nearness of the kingdom of God through the cross and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ and demonstrating that kingdom in action by the way we live and pray, and love, and share the healing word and the healing touch, even in this time of limited touching, and give thanks for that beloved physician, all praise whose gospel shows the healer of the nations, the one who shares our woes, your wine and oil, O Savior, upon our spirits pour, and with true balm of Gilead, anoint us evermore. To the glory of the eternal Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.
declaring and confessing our Christian faith by use of the Apostles' Creed. With the whole church, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body. We will now have our healing prayers of intercession with forgiveness, of confession and forgiveness. All of you comfortable kneeling, we encourage you. God the Father, your will for all people is health and salvation. We pray and thank God the Son, Jesus Christ, you came that we might have life and might have it more abundantly. We would praise and thank you, O Lord. God the Holy Spirit, you make our bodies the temple of your presence. We praise and thank you, O Lord. Holy Trinity, one God, in you we live and move and have our being. We praise and thank you, O Lord. Lord, Grant your healing grace to all who are sick, injured, or disabled, that they may be made whole, especially those whose names we lift up to you now with our voices and in our hearts. I wish to name uh, all of our brothers and sisters listed on the Manhattan Church, Dick, Arlene, Charles, David, Carl, June, George, Christine, Mary, Sally, Darlene, Anne, Harry, Virginia, Cora, June, Billy Joel, Billy, Sean, Mary Lou, Zach, who perhaps is not ill, but he's traveling far away from prayer, Felicia, Sue, Sally, Sally, Dave, and John, and all of these, uh, whatever their particular issues, not all of them are ill, some of them are our shy-ins, but uh, we continually lift them up in prayer, and also those from the community and beyond, Lee, Ralph, Evelyn, Victoria, Carrie Ann, Reagan, Roger, Larry, Evelyn, Ken, Bernice, Kathy, Warner, John, Rosalie, Hazel, and any others that you would like to. Let us pray. Hear us, O Lord of life. Grant to all who seek your guidance and who, all who are lonely, anxious, or despondent a knowledge of your will and an awareness of your presence. Hear us, Hear us o Lord, Lord of life. life. Men broken of relationships and restore those in emotional distress to soundness of mind and serenity of spirit. Hear, Hear us, us, O Lord. Lord. Bless physicians, nurses, and all others who minister to the suffering. Grant the, them wisdom and skill, sympathy and patience. Hear, Hear us, O Lord of life. Grant to the dying peace and a holy death, and uphold by the grace and consolation of your Holy Spirit those who are bereaved. Hear, Hear us, O Lord of life. 
restore to wholeness whatever is broken by human sin in our lives, in our nation, and in our world. You are the Lord who does wonders. You have declared your glory among the people. With you, O Lord, is the well of life. And in your light we see light. Hear us, O Lord of life. Heal us and make us whole. O Lord our God, look upon the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look compassion upon us and all who to you for help, for you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Let us confess our sins before God and in the presence of one another, first pausing in a few moments of silent reflection.
and give us a foretaste of the feast to come. Let us pray. God of all creation, all of your name is good, good, and your love endures forever. You bring forth bread from, 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 from the earth and fruit from the vine. Nourish us with these gifts, gifts that we may be in your world, silent in your gracious presence, in Jesus Christ our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your heart. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, Almighty and merciful Father, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who after his resurrection sent forth the apostles to preach the gospel and teach all nations, and promised to be with them even to the end of the age. And so with Luke the evangelist and the glorious company of the apostles and evangelists, with the choirs of angels and all the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Oh, holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of our might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Bless us to see you found in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Holy God, mighty Lord, gracious Father, endless is your mercy and eternal your reign. You have filled all creation with life and light. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Through Abraham and Sarah, you promised to bless all nations. You rescued Israel, your chosen people. Through the prophets, you renewed your promise. And at this end of all the ages, you sent your Son, who in words and deeds proclaimed your kingdom and was obedient to your will, even to giving his life. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, Shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Therefore, gracious Father, with this bread and cup, we remember the life our Lord offered for us. And believing the witness of his resurrection, we await his coming in power to share with us the great and promised feast. Amen. 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 Lord Jesus. And now we pray, your Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Christ, our risen Lord, that we who receive the Lord's body and blood may live to the praise of your glory and receive our inheritance with all your saints in life. Amen. 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 Amen.
join our prayers with those of your servants of every time and every place. With Mary, the mother of our Lord, blessed among all women, with Luke, the evangelist, and all the saints, and unite them with the ceaseless petitions of our great high priest until he comes as victorious Lord of all. Through him, him, with him, him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as our Savior Christ has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. <laughs> when we eat this bread, we share the body of Christ. When we drink this cup, we share the blood of Christ. Mm -hmm. Today, Today, you the blood of the Lord, Lord, Lord in the breaking of bread, as you want to reveal yourself to the disciples. Lamb of God, make a way to the the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. And see that the Lord is good. Blessed are all who put their trust in him.
blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Now, Lord, let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My eyes have seen salvation, but you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nation and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us through this gift, in faith towards you, and in fervent love for one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Before I give the benediction, I have just one more announcement I want to make. You know, during this time, uh, we have not been able to carry on any formal Bible classes or Bible study groups. But I have for you uh, today, which I'll hand out to you as you leave today, uh, a special study that I did for a class or many classes uh, at different times of key themes of the Gospel of Luke. And it's divided into five different sections with many passages that you can look up in your Bible that will illustrate these key themes of the Gospel of Luke. So you don't have to do this all in one sitting. You can spread it out or over a week or however you like to do it, or you can do with these whatever you want to. But uh, I'm offering it to you as just an opportunity for some Bible study and getting thoroughly familiar with the Gospel of Luke, which is all four Gospels are beautiful. But uh, Luke's gospel has a beauty all its own. So I'll be handing those to you as you leave today. And remember the uh, memorial book over there. And uh, if you have any names to put in there, just I suggest maybe sanitizing your hands before you pick up that pencil. But uh, most of you have done it anyway. Receive the benediction of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.
let's go from this place remembering the last line of our today's psalm. Our help is in the name of the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Amen. Amen.